hello. We're back again for another exciting week of reading through the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, Truth and Life Version, TLB. And this week, we are going to be completing the book of Ezekiel, starting with Ezekiel 33 and ending with Ezekiel 48. So we will be completing the book of Ezekiel this week. So we're moving along in, in the Nevim, which is the prophets, and Ezekiel is one of the major prophets, um, not because he's any more important than the others, but um, there are, it is, a, it is a pretty um, large book of the Bible. It has 48 chapters in it. Now, before we open up this week's reading, I'd like to open this up into prayer and bringing the Holy Spirit into this teaching. Father God, thank you. Thank you for the ability to come together once again to be in your word. And this week we're going to be finishing the book of Ezekiel. And we invite your Holy Spirit to illuminate our hearts, to bring to our knowledge, to, that our eyes might see and our ears might hear the things that you want us to see and hear. Um, this is this is your wonderful word to us, and we're asking that you lead us and you guide the way in this week's reading. And we ask you, in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, Amen and Amen. Well, okay, just um, to do a little review here about the book of Ezekiel, as we're finishing this, the theme of the book is destruction of Jerusalem and its resurrection. And Ezekiel's name is God strengthens. And when we think of Ezekiel and during the time that he was prophesying that he really did need strength from God, he lost his wife. Um, they went into um, the second siege of um, Babylon came and, and the second the second group was uh, taken into exile. Um, so he really did need God's strength. So his word is very appropriate for, for um, him as a prophet. Um, Ezekiel was a member of the Zedek Zedekite priestly family, and he was the son of Buzi, uh, B-U-Z-I. And he was trained in priesthood during the reign of Jehoiakim and deported along with many other Jews to Babylon when Nebuchadnezzar invaded Jerusalem the second time. Now, when we think of uh, of another 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 person that was very important during this time, and that would be Daniel. Um, and Daniel was already taken captive in the first invasion, um, and then in 586 BC, Jerusalem fell to ba the Babylonians, and Ezekiel was exiled in the second siege, um, and he was the prophet to the Jews in exile. Now Ezekiel's calling was pretty unique too. The word of Adonai came unto Ezekiel in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Kibor, and the hand of Adonai was there upon him. And, and what Ezekiel saw was a whirlwind that came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire unfolding itself, and a brightness was about it. And what he saw was the faces of the face of a lion, an ox, a man, and an eagle. And these same cherub cherubim were present at the Garden of Eden in Genesis 3, 24, and also appear at the throne of God in Revelation chapter 4, 6 to 8. We're going to go there right now. We're going to go, well, actually, um, Chapter 3, verses 24, is these cherubim are actually um, standing guard um, after Adam and Eve were actually, they were actually exiled from the Garden of Eden after the sin. And um, I'm just going to read that verse here for, for one second. And... Genesis 3, 
verse 24, and he expelled the man. And at the east of the Garden of Eden, he had cherubim dwell alone with the whirling sword of flame to guard the way to the tree of life. And in Revelation chapter 4, verses 6, and before the throne was something like a sea of glass, like crystal, in the middle of the throne, and around it were four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature was like a lion, and the second living creature was like an ox, and the third living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes all around and within. They do not rest day or night, chanting, Kadosh, 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 Adonai, Elohai, Sava'ot, Asher, Hayai, Vevo, Vevo, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord, God of hosts, who was, and who is, and who is to come. Now, Ezekiel saw these same four beings, um, these holy beings, um, actually proclaiming holy, holy, holy as the Lord. So, um, he also saw in the same vision the four wheels, and as the living creatures went, the wheels went by them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the, li the wheels were lifted up. So wherever the spirit was to go, they went and the wheels were lifted up over against them. For the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. Ezekiel saw this in detail. When Ezekiel saw the appearance of the likeness of the glory of, of Adonai, he fell upon his face. And the Lord said to him, Son of man, stand up, stand on your feet. I will speak to you. And the, and, and the Ruach, the spirit, entered into Ezekiel when Adonai spoke to him and set him on his feet so he could hear Adonai. The Lord told Ezekiel that he was sending him to Benaiah Israel, a rebellious nation that rebelled against the Lord. And God told Ezekiel that they would know that he was a prophet, but what, but whether they would hear or whether they would forbear, um, for they are a rebellious house, they will still know that he was a prophet. He told Ezekiel not to be afraid of them or their words and not to be dismayed by their looks. And he told Ezekiel to not be like them and to open his mouth and eat what the Lord will give him. When he looked, he saw a hand sent to him and a roll of a book in the hand. And it was written within and without. And there was written in, with therein lamentations and mourning and woe. The Lord told Ezekiel to eat the roll and go speak to the house of Israel. So Ezekiel did, and it tasted like honey in his mouth. And the Lord told him again to speak to the house of Israel, the word of the Lord. He told Ezekiel that he specifically he was specifically being sent to the house of Israel to minister and not to the other people in the land. And then I told Ezekiel that the house of Israel would not hearken to him because they would not hearken to Adonai and that this was not going to be easy and said um, that Israel was impudent and hard-hearted, but he encouraged Ezekiel and enabled him to be able to handle it and to minister to them despite the resistance. God told Ezekiel that all the words he would speak to him, he would receive in his heart and hear with his ears. He was sending him to speak to those in captivity. And Adonai made Israel, uh, I'm sorry, made Ezekiel a watchman unto the house of Israel. He was to warn them to repent of their wickedness or they would die. And he, if he did not warn them, their blood would be on Ezekiel's hands. God also warned Ezekiel that they shall put hands on him and bind, bind him with them. But he was not to go out among them. God would cause his tongue to cleave to the roof of his mouth. We read all of that already. And cause him not to be able to speak until the Lord had a message to deliver. Judgment did come on Jerusalem. The Lord told Ezekiel that his wife was going to die. And because of the situation in Jerusalem, God did not allow him to mourn his wife. Ezekiel was sent to minister to the Jews that were exiled into captivity in Babylon. And 
Ezekiel prophesied the judgment on the enemies also of Israel, Israel's resurrection, and this is depicted in Ezekiel 37 with the vision of the Valley of Dry Bones. So we're going to be reading about that. Ezekiel also saw Israel during the millennial reign, but he did not see the church age. And as I said once before, none of the prophets were shown the church age period of time. However, they, he, they were able to see the millennial reign. Uh, a lot of them saw the second coming of Yeshua, which is very interesting. So where we're going tonight, also what we're going to also cover um, is indeed Israel's resurrection, which we're going to be starting with chapters 33 to 39. The vision of the dry bones is described as we're going to see in Ezekiel 37. The vision of the Valley of Dry Bones is symbolic to the restoration of the nation of Israel to their own land under the kingdom of Messiah. And in Romans 11, 26 to 27, it, it, it does say that all Israel will be saved as it is written. And there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob for this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. And then in chapters 40 to 48, we're going to be, we're going to be seeing and reading about the Millennial Temple, the purpose for the Millennial Temple for the reign of Yeshua and the glory of God. The East Gate will be closed, the return of sacrifices. Um, Zechariah um, also spoke of the Millennial Kingdom, and we're going to see that when we read about, read this, read in Zechariah 14. Jerusalem will be known as Yehovah Shama, or the Lord is there. Okay, so you know, Ezekiel also teaches us that God will ultimately triumph in history, and his enemies may be winning battles now, but future judgment will totally destroy them. And we're going to begin reading chapter 33 of Ezekiel now. Watchmen, blow the shofar. The word of Adonai came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people, and say to them, When I bring the sword upon a land, suppose the people of the land take a man from among them and set him as their watchman. If, when he sees the sword coming upon the land, he blows the shofar, and warns the people then whoever hears the sound of the shofar, but ignores the warning if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood will be on his own head. He heard the sound of the shofar and ignored the warning. His blood will be on himself. However, if he had taken warning, he would have saved his soul. But if the watchman sees the sword come and does not blow the shofar, the people are not warned, then the sword does come and take a person from among them. He is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. You, son of man, I have set you as a watchman for the house of Israel. When you hear the word from my mouth, warn them from me. When I say to the wicked, wicked one, you will surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked about his way. That wicked one will die in his iniquity but his blood I will require at your hand. If you warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, and he does not turn from his way, then he will die in his iniquity, but you have saved your soul. You, son of man, say to the house of Israel, you have said, surely our transgressions and our sins are upon us, and we are pining away in them. So how can we live? Say to them, as I live, it is a declaration of Adonai, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Return, return from your evil ways. Why will you die, O house of Israel? You son of you, son of man, say to the children of your people, the righteousness of the righteous person will not deliver him in the day of his transgression. Nor will the wickedness of the wicked person make him stumble in in it on the day he turns away from his wickedness. Nor will the righteous person be able to live by it on the day he sins. When I tell the righteous that he will surely live 
that he trusts in his own righteousness and commits iniquity, none of his righteous deeds will be remembered. But in his iniquity that he has committed, he will die. When I say to the wicked, you will surely die, yet he turns from the sins and does what is just and right. If the wicked restores the pledge, give back what he had taken by robbery, walks in the laws of life, committing no iniquity, he will surely live, he will not die. None of his sins that he has committed will be remembered against him. He has done what is just and right. He will surely live. Yet the children of your people say the way of Adonai isn't fair, but it is their way, theirs that is unfair. When a righteous person turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, he will die in it. When a wicked person turns from his wickedness, and does what is just and right, he will live by it. Yet you say, the way of Adonai is not fair, house of Israel. I will judge every one of you according to his ways. Jerusalem falls. In the twelfth year of our exile, on the fifth day of the tenth month, a survivor from Jerusalem said, came to me, saying, The city has been struck down. The hand of Adonai has been upon me in the evening. Before the survivor came, he had opened my mouth, by the time of his coming to me in the morning, so my mouth was open, and I was no longer mute. Then the word of Adonai came to me, saying, Son of man, the inhabitants of these ruins in the land of Israel keep saying Abraham was only one, yet he inherited the land. Since we are many, the land is given to us as a possession. Therefore say to them, Thus says Adonai Elohim, You eat with the blood, lift up your eyes to your idols, and shed blood. Should you possess the land, you rely on your sword, commit abominations, and each of you defiles his neighbor's wife. Should you possess the land, say this to them, Thus says Adonai Elohim, As I live, surely those who are in the ruins will fall by the sword. Whoever is in the open field, I will give to the breast to be devoured, and whoever is in the strongholds and in the caves will die of the plague. I will make the land a desolation and a horror. The pride of her power will cease. The mountains of Israel will be desolate so that no one will pass through. They will know that I am Adonai when I have made the land a desolate waste because of all their abominations that they have committed. Now as for you, son of man, the children of your people are talking about you. By the walls and in the doorway of the houses, each one speaks to one another, each saying to his brother, Come now, hear what message is coming forth from Adonai. So they come to you as people come, and sit before you as my people and hear your words. They do not do them, for with their mouth they express do doting love, but their heart goes after their own dishonest gain. Look, you are like a love song to them, one who has a beautiful voice and can play well on an instrument. They hear your words, but do not practice them. When this comes to pass, behold, it is coming. They will know that a prophet has been among them. And that's the end of chapter 33. Chapter 34, Adonai, our shepherd. The word of Adonai came to me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, to those shepherds, Thus says Adonai Elohim, Boy, shepherds of Israel, who only take care of themselves. Should shepherds not take care of the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourself with the wool, you kill the fat ones, but you do not take care of the sheep. You do not strengthen the weak, heal the sick, bind the bind up the broken, bring back the stray, or seek the lost. Instead, you have ruled over them with force and cruelty. They were scattered for lack of a shepherd. They became food for all the beasts of the field as they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and on every high hill over the face of the earth. My sheep were scattered. No one searched. No one sought. Therefore, shepherds, hear the word of Adonai as I live. It is a declaration of Adonai. As surely as my sheep became prey and my sheep became food for all the beasts of the field, because there was no shepherd, nor did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and did not feed my sheep, therefore you shepherds. Hear the word of Adonai. Thus says Adonai Elohim, 
Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will demand my flock from their hand. I will dismiss them from tending the flock. The shepherds will no longer feed themselves. I will rescue my sheep from their mouth, so they will not be food for them. For thus, says Edonai Elohim, here I am. I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his sheep on the day, yes, he is among a scattered flock. So I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them out of all the places where they have been scattered on a day of cloud and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples. I will gather them from the countries. I will bring them back to their own land. I will shepherd them among, upon the mountain of Israel by the streams and in all the habitable, habitable places of the land. I will shepherd them in a good pasture. Their grazing place will be on the high mountains of Israel. There they will lie down on good grazing ground. They will feed in a rich pasture Pasture on the mountain of Israel. I will tend my flock and make them lie down. It is a declaration of Adonai. This kind of makes you think of Psalm 23 as well. And it also is definitely Yeshua himself sought the sheep and rescued. Um, Yeshua came for the lost and the broken. Yeshua is the shepherd of all. The best shepherd of all. I will seek the lost, bring back the stray, bind up the broken and strengthen the sick, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will tend them with justice. As for you, my flocks, thus says Adonai Elohim, behold, I will judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and male goats. Was it too little for you that you were feeding in the good pasture? Must you trample down the rest of your pastures, pastures with your feet? You were drinking clear water. Must you muddy the rest with your feet? Yet my sheep must eat what you have trampled with your feet and drink what you have muddied with your feet. Therefore, thus says Adonai Elohim to them, Behold, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you thrust with your side and, and, the so and with shoulder and gone all week with your horns until you have scattered them all over. I will save my flock. They will no longer be prey. I will judge between sheep and sheep. So I will set up one shepherd over them, my servant David. He will tend them. He will feed them himself and be their shepherd. I, Adonai, will be their God, and my servant David will be prince among them. I, Adonai, have spoken. I will make a covenant of shalom with them. I will remove the evil beasts from the land so that they may dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the forest. I will make them and the places around my hill of blessing. I will cause the rain to come down in, in its season. There will be showers of blessing. The tree of the field will yield its fruit. The ground will yield its produce. They will be secure in, in their land. Then they will know that I am Adonai when I have broken the bars of their yoke and have delivered them from the hand of those who enslaved them. They will no longer be prey to the nations. The beasts of the earth will not devour them. They will live in security and no one will make them afraid. I will make their agriculture renowned. They will no longer be consumed with hunger in the land. They will no longer bear the scorn of the nations. They will know that I, Adonai, their God, am with them. They, the house of Israel, are my people. It is a declaration of Adonai. So you, my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, you are human, and I am your God. It is a declaration of Adonai Elohim. And in John 10, Verse 11 says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And that was Yeshua speaking. And Matthew 25, verse 32 says, All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one another, just as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. I'm going to come back with part two, and we're going to kind of talk about this, this chapter for a little bit.